Big Hair Patrol will not be seen tonight, so that we may bring you the following episode of Almost Live. It's Almost Live with Tracy Conway, Bob Nelson, Bill Nye, Bill Stainton, Steve Wilson, and Ed Wyatt, and starring John Keister. And I'm your announcer. Tonight on Town Meeting, Ken Schramm talks to a woman who hey, married a dachshund. Hold it. And now expects you and me to pay for her rabies shots. Wait a second, stop. That's tonight on Wait a minute, wait. You're, 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 you're reading the wrong copy. Why don't they leave me the right copy in the first place? This is the copy you're supposed to Somebody's read. Somebody's going to lose their job over Yeah, there. just read the copy. No, but I'm just we'll saying. We'll take care of it later. Just read it. This is Almost Live. And now, here he is. <laughs> Oh, they're all excited. I know you're all excited. It's been a very exciting week. First off, of course, the Huskies still on a roll. They're still on a roll. Yeah, yeah. Although, although they kind of scared us today, though, didn't they? Kind, kind of scared us. We're used to going into the fourth quarter up about 80 points with pieces of the other team littering the field. Not today. Came down to that last second, which was very exciting. But they got away with a 24 to 17 victory. And I think it's safe to start making the Rose Bowl reservations. Don't you think? I, mean, I, think it's, I think it's safe. It's a safe bet. The other interesting news this week was that the wonderful city of Federal Way is thinking about a name change. Did everybody read this? They're thinking about changing their name. Federal Way just, it just doesn't have the right ring to it. You know, they need, they need a name that would fit a city that was not quite upscale enough to keep Cal Worthington in town. You know. <laughs> A city whose cultural center is the Gap at SeaTac Mall. You know, I'm thinking they could change it to Federal Offense. I don't know, something like that. Maybe Fred Meyer Way. You know, something, you know, something like that. But anyway, now that they've broken the ice, a lot of the other cities around the state are looking at their names and they're thinking long and hard about changing them to something a little more appropriate. And you know something. We've been to a few of those meetings, and we thought you might be interested in some of the new names you might be seeing soon. For example, the folks in Renton are thinking of changing their town to Bulldoze Me, Please, which is <laughs> be good, good, a popular. See, Renton, go ahead and do that. They're getting some validation right there for that name. Uh, Walla Walla may become Boring Boring, which is good. Redmond, Redmond becomes Nerdburg. <laughs> Sultan will become speeding ticket, which I think is, is good. OK, hump tulips. Well, that can't be improved. That's, uh, that's, that's actually the best name we've got. We can't improve that. But Bellingham. Bellingham may become outer space, which is very appropriate. Mercer Island, Fort Knox, of course. Of course. Snohomish will be called Atlantis. See, now you got, you got to think about that one, right? See, that's, that's floods and everything. See, I wrote that one. I wrote that one. I wrote that one. And finally, finally, the city of SeaTac will be changed to Couch Danceville, which is very, very important. Watch for those new names on the map. I think that all very appropriate. Well, like I said earlier, most people in Seattle were glued to the big game today, but you know, there are a remarkable number of people who just don't know how to act in that situation. So before the next big game comes along, we thought we'd present you with this helpful guide. So take a look. Almost Live training film number 53, How to Watch the Big Game. Why the worst? Throw a pass. Quarterback to properly watch the big game, you need the following players. The predictor, the coach, the designated channel changer, the party guy, and the psycho. The food. First, the dry goods, pretzels, chips, and Cheetos. Then the wet goods, beer, light beer, and salsa. Emergency number one, a woman. 
You guys, it's Bob, but he brought Cindy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Shut up. Shut up. Oh. All right, ready for the game. Hi, Bob. Hi, Cindy. Uh, no game today. Uh, yeah, I'm fumigating in the house. Yeah, I set off about four or five flea bombs. Or seven. <coughs> yeah, you better get away. This stuff's toxic. Get out. Look out. I'm sorry. Goodbye. <coughs> the game begins. You got to see what she's wearing in this next scene. No, no, really, no, it'll turn be, it back. No, no, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, no, it'll, it'll be, be worth it. No, we're fine, we're fine. We're fine. fine. We'll it'll just, just, just turn it back. All right, I'll check it, all right. Oh, you missed it! 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 missed the opening kickoff. All right, let's just, let me just check back. No! 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 Right here. Right here is the key. The key play right here. No. They miss this. No, no, I'm telling you, watch, watch. Mark my words, if they if they miss this, the game is over. If they... I'm telling you, they've got to change this boring pro set with the two backs. They need to get five guys in the pattern, hit the seams, start hitting the Y up the middle. He's going to be open every time. Who wants another? You are the worst piece of garbage to ever play defense for a football team. You suck. You suck. I can't believe this. You are killing me. You are killing me. You... Halftime activities. In keeping with male bonding traditions, the rapidly aging players recreate their favorite plays and receive permanent disabling injuries. <laughs> I was going for the ball! Ah, <laughs> uh, hey! Uh, second half is starting! Back to the game! Very Nobody has been that See? bad! Simple! Emergency number two! Hey, what happened to all the beer? Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, all right, buddy. Hey, who won? I didn't get a score. Oh, I'm sure we know. lost. Well, uh, Monday night, tomorrow, you want to have the big game? Yeah! yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah! Okay, I'll see you here tomorrow. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Monday night, all right. Yeah. Yeah. This has been a successful big game. Okay, stay with us. We've got a great show, and we'll be right back. Seattle is it? Gooey ducks. Oh, it looks... <laughs> Boy, they're really small today. Oh. Welcome to Men Are Bad. Brought to you by Andrea's Super Mace. Andrea's dropped some fast. And the Peterson Vesectomy Clinic. Peterson's, because it's his turn, damn it. Hello, I'm Hannah Damien Smith. And I'm Emma Tide. And this is Men Are Bad. Today we're going to talk about hawking loogies at the mall, missing the toilet completely. Beards that scrape like a cheese grater. <laughs> Hiding the empty beer cans in the couch. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, how awful. Awful. Oh, awful, but typical. It, it is so typical. It is so typical. And that reminds me. Let's get one thing straight right now. We don't need anything from men. I find it so typically male. All these letters you men have been sending in your typically scrawled male handwriting. Women have better manual dexterity. Mm -hmm. Women write very well. That's right. And men, they write very bad. <laughs> and they write stupid letters saying that we wouldn't do a show called Men Are Bad if we'd ever had just one good, well. <laughs> I won't even dignify the typical male thinking. That's the kind of thinking that gets us into wars. 
The kind of thinking that puts bombs and guns ahead of education and nurturing. The kind of thinking that leaves the toilet seat up, drinks milk right out of the carton, puts <laughs> dirty socks on the coffee table, and expects pants to just get up and walk to the washing machine. <laughs> Emma, Emma's in a vulnerable place today because she is a woman who loves too much. Now I'm going to become a woman who that shoots too much, who throws too many bricks through windows. Emma, Emma, you're right. better off. I knew right in the beginning he was going to hurt you, just like Jeremy and Warren hurt you, and it's because men are bad. <laughs> All men are bad. And Gareth? G Gareth was bad to you? Yes, Gareth was bad too. You know, I thought at first he might be different, but I was fooled. He flew into this typical male rage when I touched his precious stereo. What did you do? I, I put a stack of quarters on the tone arm so it would sound better. <sighs> he turned into a monster. You were trying to teach him something, you know? But no, that information was unvalid because you are a woman. You know, if a man had shown him that, he would have loved it, but I threatened him. I did something nice for his stereo, and he couldn't handle it, so his only response was rage. Okay, that brings up our first feature. Why are men so bad? New research shows that a lot of it is the result of genetics. For instance, we know now that this much of the male brain is dedicated to talking about <laughs> what he's going to do, <laughs> while this much is dedicated to it. <laughs> this much is dedicated to taking things apart. <laughs> and this much to putting things back together. <laughs> this much to lifting the toilet seat. <laughs> and this much to lowering the toilet seat. Well, I think that explains a lot. Now, let's go to our mailbag. For the first letter, we've received one from Jennifer Stanley of Bellevue, Washington, and it starts out, Hey, gals. Oh, oh, oh Jen, oh, I owie, really owie. don't like the sound of this no, at no. all. <laughs> hey, gals. Haven't men made a lot of contributions to society? After all, they invented the telephone. Uh, uh, and they invented the phrase, I'll call you. <laughs> Uh, they invented movies. And they made Debbie Does Dallas. <laughs> they perfected crop rotation farming. And they pee with the door on. That's right, that's right. Jen, 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 get a clue. Okay, let's move on to the next letter. Dear Hannah, if you're so hot, let's see you use a urinal. Jake. <laughs> Sure, Jake, no problem. Let's see you use a tampon. <laughs> okay, well, I think we have time for one more. <laughs> Dear Emma, I'm the mother of a four-year-old boy, and I'm really afraid he's going to turn out to be a bad man. What should I do, Beth? Dear Beth, get that kid into a Montessori school. Don't give him any sports toys and teach him how to bake. <sighs> Well, that's all the time that we have right now. But I want to welcome all the women in the audience to the new Thelma and Louise Gun Club that's just opened in Federal Way. It's Men Are Bad Night this Tuesday. Oh, don't forget, bring a picture of your old boyfriend. That's right. Bye. <laughs> it makes me a sweat. Seattle is it? Beer. Miller Lite, it's the best. Oh yeah. Nothing like a bud. <sighs> like crankcase oil. <laughs> Microbrew. <laughs> Tastes great. And they make it right here. These are the songs that make you cry. He spilled hot coffee on my lap. Songs that move listeners of all ages from the world's number one balladeer of pain.
the man known simply as Heiston. She stubbed her toe. She stubbed her toe. On the table lay. On the table lay. Stubbed her toe. Toe, 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 toe. It hurt so. So, so, so. These are songs of anguish, as only Heiston can perform them. And now, in one incredible collection, <laughs> you can own them all. Oh, the Novocaine was wearing off, and the pain was building fast. He hit his head against the cupboard door. It was lemon juice in an open wound. She was just chewing her gum when she bit her tongue. And Heiston also performs new versions of traditional favorites and makes them his own. If I had a hammer and it slipped and missed the nail and hit my thumb instead, oh man, would that hurt? Little wonder that his magic songs affect listeners like nothing else. I heard Heiston's song, Paper Cuts on My Fingertips, on the car radio, and I cried so much, I drove off an embankment and down a ravine, and I was almost killed. And it was this woman's near-tragic story that inspired Heiston's greatest song. Let me tell you about a woman who drove off an embankment <laughs> and down a ravine, and no. almost killed. <laughs> And now, experience every great Heiston performance ever recorded. Here is every tormented, <laughs> cramping, swelling, lacerating, excruciating song from today's outstanding troubadour of physical and emotional pain. I've collected all of Heiston recordings, from pimples on prom night to the lady with a run in her stocking at the important job interview. I could never understand why she was crying so much at all of his records until I heard the one called The 30-Year-Old Man Caught in the Police Prostitution Sting. And I just sat down and bawled like a baby. Today, this moment, right now, go out and buy the songs that make you cry and witness the throbbing genius that is High Stone. Welcome to the John Report. I'm John. Here's my report. John Mellencamp nearly fainted while playing a song at KXRX on Thursday. Mellencamp said that he started to feel queasy when he looked up and saw that the X had added the Eagles and Wings to its playlist. The uni <laughs> okay. The Eagles. All right. The University of Washington removed pornographic material from its computer files. As a first, the, the hard disks with floppies. <laughs> The Seattle Mariners say they're looking for a good communicator to be their next manager. Mainly, they want someone who can communicate to Dave Valley that his butt is history if he doesn't start to bat over 185. Yeah. Presidential candidate Jerry Brown was in Seattle Wednesday, and he said he will not accept any contributions over $100. Political experts say that he should have no trouble sticking to that promise. <laughs> House Speaker Tom Foley has been criticized for being too cautious in his job. When asked to comment, Foley said that he wasn't sure if he wanted to say anything or not about that right now, but he might later, although that's subject to change. And could somebody please check the closet for monsters? <laughs> Producers of the recently opened Phantom at the Fifth Avenue Theater are warning people not to confuse it with the Broadway musical Phantom of the Opera. They say that this Phantom is based on the Seattle Seahawks offense. <laughs> Incidentally, producers of the musical Phantom of the Opera say that they probably won't be bringing the production to Seattle next year. However, Ticketmaster has announced that all theater goers will still have to pay a $3 service charge. <laughs> Scientists say that now, there, instead of nine planets in our solar system, there may be as many as a thousand. 
They also discovered a race of people on the planet Uranus who say that they want that name changed right now. <laughs> finally, finally, a Puyallup boy took third place in the Great Pumpkin Way Off with a 595 pound pumpkin. He was disqualified, however, when the judges discovered it was Wayne Cody in an orange sweater. <laughs> this has been the John Report. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Seattle is it? Going to work at Boeing. Leave, I'm working at Boeing. How did I get into this stupid thing? Oh! <laughs> All right, let's go build some airplanes. Yeah. Well, that's just about all the time we have this week. We had a great time, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Pizzeria Pagliacci, featuring traditional and gourmet pizza by the slice. Pizzeria Pagliacci, rated Seattle's best pizza.